I'm going to be continuing preaching today uh, on uh, faith. As most of you are aware of, uh, that we have um, been uh, preaching a series uh, on faith. Faith is very important. Faith is important to, obviously, uh, God says that without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? It's interesting that passage, it says, it says uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith that he is, faith to believe that he exists. That pleases God. And faith to believe that he blesses also. So, so in other words, you got to have faith. faith uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So in other words, God has rewards for faith as well. And, 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 and I think sometimes we think God is this God that's, uh, you know, up there and he's in the story. And the Bible's a storybook of some sort. And, and oh, it's exciting. And oh, it'd be great if it was true. It is true. That's the point. It's a historical book of the accounts of what God has done on the face of the earth. And it is faith then takes us to the place where that we believe not only did it happen, you know, three, four thousand years ago, not only it happened a thousand years ago, but it, happen, it can happen today. Amen. That the God was alive then does not change. Faith is a, is a releasing to believe that he is, that he exists. And that he is a rewarder. In other words, he has blessings and rewards for those who diligently seek him. How many of us are diligent seekers of God? Amen? Me too. And, and you know, then he says you need to have faith that he has blessing for you too. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? That's one of the reasons we deal with faith. But we've dealt with faith from a lot of different aspects. But what the main aspect we've been dealing with today or over the last few weeks, and I got off last week because we had our special service where I really preached more of a salvation message. And, and we saw people give their hearts to Jesus here. It was awesome. You know, it was wonderful what God did last week. But I kind of got off this series on faith and, 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 and I actually talked about the need to receive forgiveness and give forgiveness. But today I want to continue on the series of faith. Because, see, I believe God is raising up a great church. God is raising up a great people here. People that are people of faith. People that have faith. Faith that moves the hand of God. See, faith is that which releases the, the ability of God to get intervene into your life. To be a part of your life. To do things in your life. If you don't ever believe, if you don't ever have faith... Then, then how can God be released to come into your life? To, to start with forgiveness and salvation and then move into um, the, the areas of, of trusting him for the miraculous. And so faith is important in all these aspects. And so today I want to begin with, uh, uh, but today I want to continue on this whole idea of the building up of our faith. How does your faith get built up to the place where that you can believe for bigger things? I've told you from the very beginning, you got to keep the faith. you got to hold on to the faith. But the faith needs to grow. And so we've talked about how faith grows. Well, today, I'm going to talk a little more about how faith grows. Faith grows through trials. Did you know that? <laughs> how many would like your faith to grow now, now that I tell you that faith grows through trials? <laughs> faith grows through trials but in reality uh, the trials is not necessarily even though it is it's the exercising of your faith that makes your faith grow it's the actually it's the victory after victory after victory that makes your faith grow see as I learn to trust things. I, I remember the very first time that I've only, I've only done it. I've only flown like three times, but I remember the very first time I flew a plane and I, I remember that I was with an instructor and he'd taken us up. I wasn't, he was just an instructor. He was actually a part of our church. I didn't ask him to instruct me or teach me. I just got the opportunity to fly with him. And so when we went and we flew over Mount Diablo, uh, there in the Bay area, but I remember as we were taking off and we got up there, I remember I was a little nervous. It was very loud. Couldn't hear each other. It's a little plane, really, really loud. Couldn't really hear each other until you put the headset on and you can talk to the headsets. But, but it's very loud and it's kind of, you know, it feels really rocky and it feels like it's kind of scary. It doesn't feel like it's really all that safe. And then he goes, hey, you want to fly? I said, yeah, I'll, I'd like to try. 
So I, I put my hands on, on I, I mean, I don't know what they call it. I call it a steering wheel, but anyway, but, uh, but the thing. And so I put my hand there and then he, I turned it and the very slightest turn, I, I realized, wait a minute, I have complete control of this. And I pushed forward and it went down and then I pulled back and it was like, it was like, wait a minute, this thing does exactly what I tell it to do. And as I began to fly for just a few minutes and then a little longer, I start like, hey, man, take my, I'm going to sit it up on the side. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm a pro now. Let's see. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. <laughs> the point is that I couldn't do that because it's not round. It's like long. But anyway, but the thing was that, that as I began to realize this thing works, this thing works. Do you understand what I'm beginning to say to you? That faith grows by trials, by then you have victory and you overcome. And then you go, wait a minute, this faith thing really does work like the Bible says. Does that make sense? And so today, if you'll turn with me to James chapter one, verse, uh, we're going to read a few verses here in James chapter one, starting probably, we, we can start in verse one. It doesn't matter. But uh, since we might as well not skip it, but I was going to start in two, but we'll start in one. James one, uh, verse one, it says, James a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. James is writing, of course, to the 12, to the 12 tribes. Now, their faith, people, they need to have some faith in Jesus because obviously their faith was in God but not in Jesus. And, and there was a need for that to grow and become. They were also being persecuted. They were being going through hard times. They were going through trouble. Some were being killed for the sake of Jesus. And so he was writing to them and he told them very clearly, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it joy when you fall into trials and tribulations. He's saying, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Now, we all know this. We've heard this before. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to us liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of the, of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. I, when I doubted, how much, how much it worked when I doubted how much control the pilot had with the plane. And if you've never flown, you, you don't understand. It, it's weird that you, I became like, it was like you become one with the plane and, and, you, and you push a little and it dives and you pull a little and it rises and you turn it. All of a sudden you're realizing, wait a minute here. Satan trying to kill my family. Satan's trying to destroy my life. Satan's trying to take me out. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little faith into it. And you know what? It's like, okay, let God have a chance. Have faith. All of a sudden, you don't doubt. Does, do, do, are you following what I'm saying today? Yes. And so he's trying to help us to understand this very clearly. He who gives us liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith and no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven, tossed to and fro by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Won't receive anything from the Lord because no doubt. I mean, all the doubt. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. If I, when I had not tried flying the plane before, I doubted that they really had that much control over it. That they, I, I doubted that, that it would really work as it said it would and when you're a young believer and a young Christian and you start out, all of the disciples and all the apostles and all the great ones, what took Peter from sitting around while Jesus is hanging on the cross? What happened when he was taken and, and, and he's denying Christ, but yet <clears throat> later in his life, he's willing to die for Christ? What, what caused his faith to go from, from, from this place of failure faith? Faith of failure, faith of giving up, faith of no perseverance. What, what, what brought him from that place to this man that was so full of faith? And he'd see people healed and delivered and set free and, and go to places and they were, <clears throat> they, were, uh, they were so full of hate and preach the gospel. Today I want to focus a little bit more on an Old Testament uh, story in the Bible. 
And it's actually found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. In 1 Samuel chapter 17. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it, it's obviously a very powerful uh, story. And um, 1 Samuel chapter 17, it's the story of David. I love, I love the, the, I love the story of David. And, and, and David is trying to, uh, I think he's really showing us something about faith and about trust. And because it's not necessarily the trial that strengthens you. Because, you know, we go through lots of trials. You know that? We go through lots of junk. Lots of junk. It's not the, the trial that strengthens you. It's the overcoming. It's the perseverance that strengthens you. I can have all kinds of trials. I can have all kinds of trouble and all kinds of problems. But if I choose to let them defeat me, to hold me down, to push me out, to cause me to go the wrong direction, to do the wrong thing, right? Is that, is that true? You don't become a strong in your faith by that. People oftentimes, uh, you know, talk to me and say, well, I, I haven't, you know, this problem and that problem and this problem. And I keep going through all these problems. I'm like, well, tell me a little bit about what you're doing about it. Well, I'm just trying to make it. I'm just existing. God's not calling us just to make it. God's calling us to persevere. Victory is my destiny. Amen. This particular story in, in Samuel chapter 17 is a, is a story of when David was preparing to uh, Saul, uh, he had uh, preparing to uh, uh, go into battle with uh, Goliath. You know, he had showed up to the battlefield. Uh, Goliath was making fun of God's people and his brothers were there. And he showed up there as a young man to, 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 to see his brothers and provide some resources to them. And when he shows up, he hears Goliath uh, making fun of God's people in the armies and challenging them. And he's like, I'll fight him. And, and of course, he goes to the king to, and the king's like, you can't fight him. You're a little boy, you know, and you know the story. Right, I'm, 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 I'm blowing through the story a little bit, but I know you, most of you know the story. If you don't, I would encourage you to read, uh, read about it. But in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34, so, but David said to Saul, went to Saul the king, and he said to him, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and I struck it and delivered that lamb from this, from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and I struck and I killed it. Wow. <laughs> so, so, so David's saying, I want to go fight Goliath. What causes a young man, a, probably not that strong of a boy. Yes, he's probably stronger than what I am. But because he was working out with his hands and taking care of sheep and, you know, walking a lot and all that. He's probably in pretty good shape. But what causes him to say, I'll take on that giant Goliath. When these soldiers were standing around, all scared. You know what I mean? What caused it was that young man had courage. And even when he was tested and a lion came and a bear came and took one of his sheep and took it away. See, it was a, it was a test. It was a trial. When the, when the bear came, when the lion came and took his sheep and he would chase it down and he'd take it back. Good enough. No. Why? Because then the lion or the bear uh, turned on him. And it says he tore it. He fought it with his hands and killed it. How? Not his own ability. He did it in God's ability. And in your life, you've gone through some stuff. You're going through some junk. You're having some hard times. Maybe you're, you're, you're through some of those things, you know. You, you've been through stuff and Satan comes along and he tries to make you have, you're, you have doubt. And, and you don't know if Jesus is real and you're not sure if God is real. But then you, you, you step out a little bit and you trust him. And, and all of a sudden you, 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 wait a minute, I feel God. I know he's with me. And things come in your life, sickness and, and financial stuff and, and troubles with relationships. And all this stuff comes along in your life. But instead of trying to do it in your own strength, you, you realize that, that, that you need God to help you. Do you see what begins to happen? And, and I don't even know if David would have been able to kill Goliath without first having the trials in the in, in, taking care of being a shepherd, the trial of the lion. I know that Saul would not have been happy without hearing those stories. 
And it was powerful because he goes on and he says, says as if uh, uh, in, 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 he, he tells Saul about these stories. And, and he said, uh, uh, your servant, in verse 36, your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. And he looks at Saul and he says, and that uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion. See, he knew who had delivered him. That the Lord had delivered him from the paw of the lion and the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. I want you to start opening your eyes and recognizing. Now, that's not a small thing that God did for David. But I want you to recognize the small things that God has done for you. The times he protected you. The times when, when something bad maybe happened. I mean, we, I remember when I was a kid we'd, or when I was driving lots of times, I would come up on accidents and I'm like, wow, if I wouldn't have stopped here and did this. You know what? Recognize the hand of God. When, it, when a business deal goes right and, and, and things seem to connect and happen right, recognize God's goodness. It's not all about me that I got this good job. It's not all about me that, 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 that everything worked out. Start recognizing the hand of Almighty God. Amen? He could have said, well, when I was a young man, there was a lion of bear. I ran out, tore that guy to pieces, man. Look at these things, man. That's what he could have done. But no, he knew what had happened. It wasn't about his guns. It wasn't about his ability. It was about the God that he served. I want us to start exercising our faith in this church because the devil is going to throw everything he possibly can at this church. We are a soul winning, discipling, life changing place for people. And Satan wants to make that not happen. I'm here to tell you, he is a liar. We are rising up to be the men and women of God in the last days. They can look at it and say, when I, I remember when we were small, there wasn't that many people. COVID came and we started the church, but it didn't matter. We persevered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we weren't going to let it take our church out just because we were a baby church, a church only a year old. We were only a week old when COVID hit. So what? God has spoken. This church will grow and exist, and we will make a difference in this city and the surrounding county in the name of Jesus. And we're going to look back, and we're going to remember when you're only a week old and how God had people show up and how every week people got saved and how we did big days and people showed up and they would get saved and we'd see how people would be delivered and set free. We're going to remember those things. And when you get down the road and the devil tries to stop us, it don't matter what happens. I've been there when we put up, begin to build new buildings. And, and I remember the story of, a, of my brother's church that he pastors now. They had built it. They put the walls up in Fairfield. The wind came along at the wrong time and blew down the, all the whole church and blew it all down. And it broke down. They had to start over. That's okay. They started over and they rebuilt it. And God has blessed. And literally thousands of people have been saved in my brother's church. Why? Because people trusted God. I'm encouraging you today that you build upon those victories. See those victories recognize those victories state what god has done and you got to understand what you're going through right now god's just kind of he's building your faith win the battle persevere see victory in that problem because the next phase you're going to need that new level of strength that you'll have I killed the lion, I killed the bear, and now this devil, this devil Goliath is in front of me, and we're going to kill him too in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, that's the kind of faith, it's the miracle working faith that I believe that God is trying to build up in us. See, trials test our faith. But not only trials test our faith, they confirm our faith. They confirm it both to those around us. So when you go through these hard times, it confirms that guy really means what he says. You ever seen somebody before that is a man or a woman of faith and they stand strong in the middle of junk and stuff and you see them come through and persevere and you're like, wow, 
that person really means what they say. It confirms it. Not only does it, the trials confirm, it purifies our faith. It purifies our faith. In other words, it, when I'm going through trials and I'm going through hard times, I start recognizing, what am I trusting? I mean, if we'd have read on in, in 1 Samuel there, it goes on and then Saul says, okay, all right, you can do it. And then Saul gives him armor and, 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 and he gets all the armor on him and, and he gives him a, the, the weapons of warfare that every man uses. And, 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 and David's like, oh, I don't I don't like this. I can't, I can't move. Tried to do it the old way. And David says, no, 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 no. We do the same thing. We say, well, I should, I got to take care of this financial problem by doing this. I got to take care of this relationship problem by doing this. I got to, I got to take care of this communication problem by doing that. We always, and and not to, not to say we shouldn't use our, the wisdom God's given to us and be smart about things. I'm not saying that. I'm not at all discounting it completely, but I'm telling you sometimes some battles cannot be won at all with the normal things you've used before. Sometimes it just takes standing up and saying, I know that I know the God, the creator of the universe is on my side. And that battle means nothing to him. He can just take and flick it away. I put my trust in the Lord, not in my own stuff. Amen? Amen. And so it's important it purifies your faith. It gets rid of some of that stuff where I don't, you know what? I don't really need that. I, I need God. Trials grow in our trust in God. It grows our trust in God. Whatever it is, it grows. You can, you can just trust God more. The more times you go through trials and trouble and you know that you know and it's very powerful i'm not gonna labor this much longer i think i kind of got i think i got it across what i'm trying to say today <laughs> and i don't plan on laboring a lot longer uh concerning this but i want you to know that it's true now the psalmist wrote some great things about trials even in in psalm 119 verse uh, 71 which is 100 psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible, uh, uh, it, it says in verse 71, it was good for me to be afflicted. <laughs> it was good for me to be afflicted. Psalm 119, verse 71, so that I could learn your statutes. Bottom line is, David understood what it meant to go through trouble, trial, hardship. Because of his own mistakes, his own sin, his own failure. Because of his ability to stand, his ability to trust God and take steps of faith. All of it produced the man of faith that ultimately would be called a man after God's own heart. Today I encourage you, I encourage you, let trials produce endurance. Endurance. And really, the growth comes in the patience, in the endurance. I think sometimes people think about patience and they think about it just sitting around and waiting forever. Pa that's not the kind of patience it's talking about when it says patience. It's talking about patience as an endurance. It's a patience that doesn't just sit around and do nothing. It has faith. It trusts. It's, it's an endurance patience. It's a patience that says... It says, I trust God that if I keep doing the right things in due season, good stuff will come into my life, right? It's a patience that says, I don't have to have the victory right this minute because I know that I know that I know that the victory is going to come. It doesn't matter if it's come yet, it's going to come. And it's this confidence, the kind of endurance and so the victory is not, does not, is not a reality. And the growth of your faith does not actually show up until you endure and overcome. And then another situation and you trust and endure and overcome. Make sense? So wherever you're at in your faith today, I would encourage you, you can read the rest of James there and uh, the rest of the chapter. The whole chapter really keeps coming back to, to, to faith and trials and tribulation, all that stuff and the power of it. I would recommend that. And I would encourage you um, because God wants to strengthen your spiritual muscles. Amen? 
your spiritual muscles. Me, you can tell I spend a lot of time on my physical muscles. Look at these guns. You know what I mean? And if I flex too much, I'll rip my shirt. So I got to be careful. Don't want to, you know, the whole, you know. But so obviously, I got I, I physical. No, I'm, you know, I'm teasing. But my spiritual reading the word and memorizing the word and proclaiming the word. It's not just about memorizing. It's about using it. It's about recognizing that you're using it. Recognizing that God's there doing something. That will build your faith. Amen. Let's all stand. I'm gonna, we're going to pray. What I would like to encourage you today is I'd like to encourage you to, uh, I'd, like you to I'd like to encourage you to just uh, think about some things in your life where that you have seen God come through for you. I, I really would. I'd like you to focus on some of that stuff. And this week, I want you to try to recognize the small stuff that God does for you as well. And, and recognize that it might not be you that's making that happen. That it actually might be God involved in the situation. I'd like you to recognize, not take credit for things. And I know the more gifted or the <clears throat> more talented you are, I know it's sometimes harder. I get that. I think some areas of my life that I'm not so gifted or talented in, when God does things for me, I think sometimes I, it's, it's easier for me to really say, oh, that was God, man. I'm a mess in that area. You know what I mean? And, and I, but I would also want you to know <clears throat> that even if you do something in your own ability, and the ability God, it's, the ability, it's not your own ability, it's the ability God gave you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I really want to see our faith begin to grow. <clears throat> and it happens through recognizing God's involvement in the process. So I want you to open your heart and your mind to that this week. And then I want you to, if you have an issue or there's a problem in front of you, I want you to ask God to do a miracle. And then trust him that he's going to do that. Amen? Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all of us in your house today. And God, I thank you for those that have, we've committed our life to you. And we want to honor you today with our life. And Lord, I pray that our faith would grow. Ask God right now. Ask all of you, whether you're uh, on the internet or, or whether you're here this morning. I want you to say, God, I want my faith to be stronger. I want my faith. I want to exercise my faith. And even during the trials that I'm going through right now, God, just tell them, God, even the trials right now, I ask God that I would trust you in those things. Lord, I pray right now, God, that all of our faiths would grow. They would go from glory to glory to glory to new heights in you, God. Every day. Bless your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.